Now we're going to go ahead and talk about how to render individual fields in the template itself. And then we're going to go ahead and expand on that into form sets and how they can be rendered individually as well. Now, a big part of the reason that we've talked about these things now is because we're working towards a more dynamic field when it comes to editing or updating any given ingredients. And to get there, we have to understand a little bit more about the templates themselves and also how forms work. That's why we're here now. And so what we can do is we can actually change this form.asp to something different. In fact, we can use a for loop, something like for field in form, and then do an in for, and actually render out just the field itself, just like that. Now do keep in mind that this form right here is actually a context argument, right? It's a context variable that I'm adding in if I change that context variable, I would have to change this loop. That is definitely important to remember. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go back into our create view here. And if I refresh, notice that it changes things quite a bit. And one of the biggest changes that you should notice is the fact that there are no labels, of course, that the labels are completely gone, but also certain elements from the form itself are no longer rendered. To get this elements open, you can do view and developer and inspect elements, or you can right click and inspect. Now, a inspect element or something like this exists on pretty much all modern browsers on your desktop. And if you have Chrome, it's just simply that inspect. Um, and so the idea here is now we can actually see this code. Worst case scenario, I can always take a look at the source itself, so view source, and this will show me all that code again. So the idea now is we actually want to take a look at this, what it originally was. So let me just back up a second. I'm going to copy this and re uh, undo everything I just did. Just bear with me a moment. And we save that and we refresh in here again with the source going, we see that P tag here, right? And notice that it also is saying require field. And so this is actually rendering out pretty much everything that the model form or Django form is passing through, including that required CSS class. So at this point, we actually do not have that being rendered out if we continue along the lines of just rendering out any given form field itself. This has its pluses and minuses, of course. So what I wanna do is add additional features in this for loop to kind of compensate for that. And so to do this, we use a seemingly peculiar way. So we can actually do field.field.required. Okay, so this is actually gonna give me a Boolean value of whether or not something is required. So if I you know, re-render this, it'll show me that. And so now what I can do is actually around the field itself is put a div class and save it like that. And then I can actually say class and say, you know, if field.field .field required then, well, I can actually add in my own required class right here. So required class, and we can say, and if. I can also put an else clause in there. Uh, but now what I've got is a really quick way to, oops, this should be dot required. Really quick way to actually add in another div in here. Okay, so it really just turned my P tags into divs. Not quite, not fully, uh, but that's actually a really nice thing to add in here. So the question is really, what about this actual required CSS class? Can I even access this in here? And the answer is hopefully not surprisingly, you can access it directly from the form itself. So to do that, we can come in here, instead of using required dash class, we can actually use you know, the form element itself and then using whatever, you know, required, whatever class we want to, or attribute of that form we'd want to use. In this case, it's required CSS class. And so we save that. And of course, now it's kind of right back to where I was with that required field. Notice it's not changing the input at all. That input is still rendering as the form instance had. Um, but that's actually, I think, a really nice way to just change it to divs if we wanted to. Now, there are other elements that I'll just copy and paste in and discuss. Um, one of them being if there's errors, right? So I can actually add in, if there's errors, I can put in field.errors, 
right? And then if I want the label back in here, I can add in the label itself. Now, label underscore tag will, will render out the actual label, the HTML element. If I just simply want the label itself, that's how I do it. And that's actually going to be a string versus the actual tag itself, which means that I can do all sorts of things for that field itself, which I think is also pretty cool. Um, and so granted, one of the sort of last things that we'd want to look at with these field items is a help task. So help text will give some additional data about any given field. So in the case of our name here, uh, we can actually pass in another argument called help text. This, of course, is outside of the widget. So if I only pass in help text, that would be fine. Um, and actually, I will do that and say help text and say this is your help exclamation mark. We save that and then we can refresh in here and notice that we've got that P tag coming in here. And of course, if I look at what's rendered, this is what shows up. And so this actually makes a lot of sense in the case of explaining additional data about any given field. And so I don't have to manually write it in the HTML itself and write some other conditions that might be coming in with that. Now you might be wondering what this bar slash safe is. That's called a template filter or a template tag. And so what we can do here is we can make sure that I can actually allow for links in here. And so you can do a href equal to slash, let's do double quotes slash contact and say contact us and then close off that a tag, save it. And then if I refresh in this help, I now have a proper link in there. Whereas if I did not have that safe item here or the safe template tag um, or template filter, I can refresh in here and it will, won't render that out anymore, which I think is why that's an example on there, especially with something like help text, right? It actually makes sense to have other links in here. Okay, so that's actually rendering out form fields. Granted, there's a lot more customizations that we could end up doing, uh, but I just wanted to generally show how you would do this. And now, of course, getting the other form error, like the error CSS class, um, we could say if field.errors and then run those errors showing up as well. Um, and so now what I want to look at is, well, is there a way to take this same concept with a form set? You betcha. So to do it, we would do for form in form set. And then we would say in four. And so in this case, this is more about, you know, the outside of the form. Of course, we can also iterate in there for field in form, right? And it's going to be based off of this. So if this was ABC, this would have to be ABC as well as whatever else. Uh, but of course, I'm not going to end up doing that right there. Instead, I will leave it in as form. And this time I'm going to go ahead and do a div class. And this time I'm going to go ahead and add in the class of ingredient dash form. Okay. And then here I'll just do form dot as P. And so we save that. And to verify that this is working, I'm going to get rid of this form set as P here. I'll save that and we'll jump in to a actual recipe to edit it. And here we go. So now what I want to do is I'm going to change this tomato from one ounce to two. I'll hit save and we have a problem. It's an empty field now and there's literally nothing there. It quite literally deleted everything from that. So even in the admin, if we refresh in here, we should, wait a minute, we're seeing everything. So did it delete everything? And the answer is no. So the problem with this is the fact of how form sets end up working, right? So not only do we need to iterate through all of the forms that are in that form set, but we also need to add in something called form set dot management form. So we'll save that and we'll take a look at that in just a second. So this at a bare minimum is how we can render out a form set sort of manually without doing form set dot as P. So we refresh in here and let's take a look at the source code again. And now I'm going to scroll down. Oops, let's go ahead and look at the source code for the editing of this item, which is simply that. And I'm going to scroll down all the way. And now I see these ingredient forms coming out. But what's here is the actual management form. And so this actually just tells Django about this form set, a lot of the data that's coming through, right? So like total forms is four. Initial forms is also four and then so on, right? So minimum number of forms is zero. This is an argument that we can pass into the form set factory. The maximum number of forms, this is another argument that we can pass into the form set factory. This is a thousand. 
So as it stands right now, you can only have a thousand ingredients in this. Now we can certainly change both of those things, uh, but this is actually a really cool thing. It's now allowing me to see a lot more in depth as to how I might render out any given, you know, like form set itself and the forms that come in it. So for me, what I often would end up thinking about is adding a style to this. Let's say, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a style tag right in here and we'll do ingredient form and I'll say border bottom is one pixel and it's solid and we're gonna go ahead and use black. So we save that now and I refresh in here and now it's at least separating these ingredients. Now don't get me wrong, I rarely actually write inline styles like this. I just wanted to show you how to do it before we even set up how to have our custom style sheets and all that. Uh, but there we go, we now have a way to better render any given form or the form fields. Now to render out form fields is something also I don't do very often. I would actually end up using Django Crispy Forms because that handles a lot of the heavy lifting for us. But I think it's still really important to understand how to do these things on our own so that you don't have to rely on third-party packages all the time for every single thing.